had, I guess, an unexpected end to the last sort of sequence of doors that we went through. We ended up going through um, doors three and two. And uh, I mean, I, I had wondered if one of the endings was going to just be like a complete like mess of bodies where everything went wrong, but I didn't think it was going to be just being uh, like murdered by someone. Like, who was it? Because, you know, if Zero wanted, if it was Zero and Zero just you know, thought we weren't playing the game the way he wanted. He could have just detonated the 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 bombs, I suppose. But there's 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 a few possibilities in the there there might not be any bombs because we know that Snake's body is likely a fake, which we could then maybe presume that the Ninth Man's body is also a fake. Um. So the bombs might just be a threat, an empty threat, a ruse, a Trojan horse, I don't know what the right metaphor is, but so maybe the only way to actually forcefully kill us was to murder us in that fashion. So that's the only scenario where I could see it being uh, Zero or the Puppet Master or um, whoever it was. So I don't think we really have any clue as to who it might... Oh, well, maybe it was all ice. Maybe it was Alice, right? Maybe. Um, yeah, but it, it wasn't any of us, unless it was the ninth man or snake. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll hear a little bit more about... Get, well, I don't know. Very tricky one, that. Anyway, uh, the new path we're on... Hey, let me look at the charts. Anyway, we're going to go for door number eight and go with Lotus and, I presume, Clover. I... I... I think I'm going to go with door eight. Okay, eight it is. Yeah. All right, then. That means June's got to go through seven. What? Why? Yeah, and I guess... I mean... The whole bit with June was, was quite a little bit sad but they seem to drag it out a little bit. Um, but, I mean, I guess it made her look a lot, um, I can see her, I can see her with more genuine eyes now. She, you know, they are just kind of old school friends. She always had a crush on him. And I guess it's, I guess it's just simple that way. Like her and Junpei, it's quite straightforward, right? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be as, <laughs> I mean, I'm still going to get cringed out by them talking when they talk to each other sometimes, but um, I guess it was genuine. But yeah. What? Santa grimaced and muttered angrily to himself, but finally began to explain. If the six of us are going to keep going without leaving anyone behind, there are only three ways we can do it. Have three, five, and eight go through seven and four, six, and seven go through eight. Four, five, and seven go through seven, and three, six, and eight go through eight. Or three, six, and seven go through seven, and f there yes, are no yes, other yes. combinations. Let In other skip. words, three and four, and seven and eight can never go through the same doors. You get it now? As Santa finished, June looked over at Junpei, tears welling up at the corners of her eyes. Oh no! You're saying we aren't going to see each other again for a long time. Uh... Junpei felt just as June did. He wanted to be at her side through whatever trials they were preparing to face. But he knew if they were to survive, he had to swallow his feelings. In order for the six of them to move forward, he and June had to be separated. He looked at June. He was scared to lose her, but he swallowed, steeled his resolve, and did his best to smile. Hey, come on. You're making it sound like we're never going to see each other again. We gotta split up, but only for a while. This is just like when we went into the four and five doors, remember? We got split up then too, but we all met back up. 
I'll bet seven and eight are just like that. You mean they're connected somewhere? Yeah, probably. Probably? She didn't sound very hopeful. It was seven that interjected. I'm sure they're going to connect somewhere. Why can't I put it on auto? Uh, on skip. Why? What makes you think so? If they don't, then neither team can get through door nine. In other words, the game would end right here. Zero's been on top of his shit so far. I don't think he'd blow it now. I'm damn sure that son of a bitch wants to have his fun as long as possible. He's not going to end this game until we get through the nine door. Jean said nothing. Hmm. The tears were gone, but her eyes were still sad as they looked at Junpei. He met them, and with what reassurance he could manage, he laid his hand gently on her shoulder. Everything's going to be fine. We're, we're going to see each other again. I promise. Jean bit her lip and gave him an almost imperceptible nod. Yes. Promise? The voice was barely above a whisper. Santa's voice sh shattered the moment. <sighs> you guys are done, right? He stretched and continued. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Clover and I will both go into separate groups. I figure I'll take seven and Clover can take eight. Any problems with that, Clover? Clover looked away and was silent for a moment. Whatever. It was more of a dismissal than an agreement, but Santa didn't seem to care. All right, we're ready to go then. Let's move. At Santa's command, the group split and head for their respective doors. Santa 7 and June walked towards door 7, while Clover, Lotus and Junpei headed for door 8. For a long moment, they stood in front of the door. Then Lotus laid a hand against her chest <laughs> and turned to Junpei and Clover. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Then shall we go? It's open. A narrow hallway stretched out before them. Okay. Hurry! Lotus and Clover leapt through the door. The moment they did, their bracelets beat. The detonators in the bracelets had been activated. Jinpei stepped forward to follow them. But as he was about to step over the threshold, he stopped. <sighs> he looked to his left, towards door 7. <laughs> <laughs> she stood there, mirror image of Junpei. <laughs> she looks like she's mad with him. She turned and looked toward him. Their eyes met. June. Jumpy. Oh, God. They nodded. Their farewell took almost 1.5 seconds. What the hell are you doing? And someone took hold of Junpei's arms and hauled him bodily through the door. He heard the sound of the numbered door slam shut behind him. His bracelet gave a cold electronic beep. 81 seconds left, hurry! Lotus snapped at him and ran to the dead. Ugh. Junpei and Clover followed her as fast as they could. <sighs> it stopped. With a shaking hand, she wiped a few beads of sweat from her forehead. Clover, however, was calm, aloof, perhaps. Pointless. She muttered to herself without emotion and began to walk down the hallway, leaving behind a confused Junpei and Lotus. Lotus watched the girls receding back with a mix of frustration and curiosity. What an unpleasant girl. Shh, what? I bet she's not very popular with the boys. The sarcasm seemed a little more biting than was perhaps necessary, but she sighed and started after the younger girl. Hmm, maybe pairing these two together was a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Too late now. I better catch up to them. After taking a moment to catch his breath, Junpei followed. I mean, you know, she's got two daughters that we uh, that we now know of. So, you know, maybe she might actually be better than we realize. Ah, oh, it's a dead end. Right, so... Hold on. So, going this way... I have the clover thing. I don't think there's ever a circumstance where you should go this way. Um, was it door? Was it this door number four? 
Yeah, this is always the best way to go because we get. I don't know what the second. This this is the clover, and this is. I just, I just guess the the information we got. Here, I'm guessing that this is these are maybe key cards and clover information. Look, there's nothing on the path we went last time though. There's absolutely no nothing. Crazy. Maybe if we would have gone this way and then through here. Hmm, who knows? The hallway made a number of turns before at last coming to a dead end. There's a door in the left, though. For a few minutes, they stood in front of the door, examining it. Above the door was a plate with the word laboratory engraved on it. On it. A laboratory? Huh. Oh, that doesn't sound very pleasant. I don't like the look of this place. All right, well, let's, let's just go home then. You know, we don't have to be here. Oh, wait a minute, we're trapped here. Me either, but there aren't any other doors. It's not like we have a lot of choices. Exactly. Jinpei. Huh? What? Please, you first. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, just sh shove us through first. Jinpei suspected her politeness was motivated by something other than respect. Ugh, fine. Jinpei muttered to himself and pushed open the iron door. His first steps inside were tentative and careful, but as he examined the room, it became clear that there was no imminent danger. Lotus followed him in, and Clover brought up the rear. Uh, this looks like a surge, like a a, sur a surgery view window, maybe. The room they found themselves in was divided into two separate separate areas by a curved wall. A thick glass window built into that wall made it possible to see the other side of the division. What's it called now? Like, you know, where like trainee sh surgeons often observe their practice. Is, is it the oper it's an operating theatre? Is it called like the? Is it like a mezzanine? I'm not sure. It's because it, I guess it's named similar to what it would be in a theatre. You know, I think the window looks into another room. <laughs> Genius Junpei. Maybe it's for monitoring something. We'll rename you GJ. Genius Junpei. Junpei walked to the window and looked through. What the hell? He wasn't sure what else to say. In the center of a room shaped like a quarter circle, a mannequin lay on what looked like a medical exam table. <sighs> looks so creepy. Junpei jumped a little. He hadn't noticed Lotus come up next to it. It's kind of like that doll is waiting for surgery. This is a laboratory, right? I'd say it's more like it's waiting to be experimented on. Ooh. Uh. It's creepy either way. You don't think that thing's gonna suddenly sit up or something, do you? Well, I don't I know. Do. I mean, look at all those cables sticking out of it. If we press the wrong button, I don't know. <sighs> Stop it. Just thinking about it is terrifying. She was gripping her arms, the knuckles on her hands white. Wait, where's Clover? She was still standing near the entrance of the room. <laughs> her face had the appearance of calm, but it was drawn and somehow sad. What is she? There was something almost pitiful about her. Jupe walked over to her and as kindly as he could spoke. Are you okay? Clover looked away. What are you talking about? What? I I'm just worried about you. You've been real quiet. What? I can't be quiet if I want to? Well, I mean, of course you can. I, I just... Okay, then. If I can be quiet if I want, just leave me alone, okay? Come on, you know I can't do that. We gotta work together. Clover bit her lip and was silent for a Junpei, moment. Junpei, you just don't get it! Her cry took Junpei by surprise, then he stumbled backward a few steps along. My brother's not the kind of person who just leave me behind! Something happened to him! Something... something bad. Yeah. Junpei had nothing to say. Lotus jolted from her mannequin nightmares by Clover's voice turned toward them. What happened? Clover's eyes slid to Lotus, then back to Junpei. Look, just don't bother me, okay? Leave me alone. Finished, she turned around. Before Junpei or Lotus could say anything, Clover had begun to walk quickly away. Hey, wait! Clover! Hold on! That way is... I told you to leave me alone! 
He might as well have been talking to a wall for all the notice she took of his cries. Not even slowing down, she made for a doorway cut in front of cut in the wall in front of her. Without even slowing down, she passed through the doorway. Clover, watch out above you! And without warning, an iron gate fell from the ceiling like a portcullis, sealing Clover in. What the heck? What's going on here? Clover grabbed hold of the iron bars and shook them as hard as she could. Hang on! I I'll get it open! Oh, for crying out. You'll never do it on your own. Junpei grabbed the bars and pulled. In a moment, Lotus joined him. The three of them pulled as hard as they could, but... Damn it! It's not moving! Wait! Are you gonna give up? Just like that? No, I'm not giving up. This has got to be another one of Zero's puzzles. You don't say! If it is, then there's got to be a way to open it. Jinpei nodded. Just what I was thinking. Now all we got to do is find it. Lotus and I can look around out here. Clover, you're going to have to see if you can find anything in there. Oh, yes, I'm on it. All right. Uh, this might mean we don't get to talk to her. But I could be wrong about that. Oh my god, there's too much stuff. The window made of really thick glass. I don't even think a bullet could break it. Is this like an examination table? There's a creepy mannequin in here, guys. So there was a mannequin in the other one as well. I wonder what this is. I think here looks like a vault meter. And this is the control for that. Gosh, so many dials. Why don't you try turning one of them? No, uh, nope, nothing. There's nothing. There's no power here, guys. I turn the dial a whole bunch, but even if I turn all the switches on, nothing happens. I think this thing is a monitor for whatever experiment they were running here. There's a bunch of stuff on here, like resistance, value, and voltage. The power's off, so there's nothing on it right now. I don't know what kind of table this is, but part of it's all black. There's a pen lying over here. I think someone probably used it to make the table black. Hmm, well, if they only used the pen on one part of it, there's probably something underneath all that pen. Clover. You think you can erase it? Yeah, sure. Oh, this is a permanent marker. Jinpei, do you know how to erase ink from a permanent marker? Erase ink from permanent marker, huh? Give me a minute, Clover. I'll be right back. It's a rack. There are a bunch of cables on it. Somebody cut the outer stuff off the cables. I can see the wires inside. I wonder what they washed here. There are these weird colored stains all over the sink. I guess this drain is for water. Well, there's nothing here. Those are the stairs I just came down. The bars and the gate are just above me. Looks like this door is the exit. The door on the right just goes to the laboratory. Nope, this door isn't going anywhere. No dice. It won't open. I mean, that's about as much as I expected. I don't think Zero would just let us out of the room quite that easily. Looks like this is the control for the electronic door. There's a red light on the display. That means it's locked. If we can get that light to turn green, maybe we can get Clover back. There's a lot of stuff here. I don't know how we could use any of these. <laughs> well, I can say for sure that I do know how to use at least one of these things. Which one? The one on top. I think it's a power cable. A power cable, eh? I'll take that. This is definitely a power cable. You remember if we ran into anything that didn't have power? Yeah, yeah. Good one. Some equipment. Some are useful. I think this thing's supposed to power that machine in the other room. Well, it doesn't appear to be doing that. I wonder how we're supposed to get it to turn on. This is a keyhole. This looks like a keyhole for the activation key. The hands on the clock have stopped moving. The clock may stop, but time goes on. No, no time to screw around. We need to figure out a way out of here. There are two levers here. Do you think they activate something? Well, why don't you move one? 
All right, I'll give it a try. Nope. Doesn't look like anything's happened. This monitor doesn't have a power cable, so one end of this cable needs to be connected to a monitor and the other needs to plug under the desk. All right, let's just slip you in. Hmm? Well, shoot, I can't use this. What's wrong? Cable's got three prongs, but the socket only has two holes. It's not going to fit, is what I'm saying. In other words, we're going to need to find a plug to change the power cable to one with two prongs. That's right. A whole bunch of steel lockers. Nine on the right all have little red lights on them. Red lights, huh? Well, can't hurt to give these babies a try. Yep, just as I thought. Lock tight all nine of them. I wonder if there's anything important in there. That we can clean off the ink with that. Ethanol, I wonder if this is for antisepsis. Oh, and it says anhydrous ethanol. Anhydrous? Isn't that different from regular ethanol? Come on, that's common knowledge. It can erase marks left by a permanent marker. Cardboard boxes, there's some papers and stuff. What's in the boxes? They look quite full. Oh, sorry. Filled with papers. Hey Clover, use the ethanol. You should be able to wipe off the permanent ink with it. What am I going to wipe with? Oh well, your clothes of course. Ah, kidding, just kidding. Please don't look at me like that, you're scaring me. These lockers are a little larger than the ones on top. Let's see if there's anything useful. Ah, uh, no, nothing. <laughs> oh! This is a really old type of keyboard. Could you wipe off the permanent ink? Look, Clover, right now, at this moment, you're the only person we can depend on. I'm trusting you with this. Giggle, you trust me? I feel kind of special. Uh, where else am I supposed to look? Hey Clover, there's a door over here too. Wait, I'll be right there. I can hear over there. This door's gonna... Damn it, can't open it. Clover, what about your side? It won't work. I can't even move the knob. I what this cable's connected to. Okay, one side of this thing is in the room with us. The other side extends into the laboratory where Clover is. In other words, the console in front of us is connected to the device in the laboratory. Keyboards. The mouse. Okay, what am I not seeing? Maybe we need to get Clover to search for something. Some cables. Can I not have them? There's something sticking out of the mannequin's head, like wires or something. What the hell are they doing in there? Huh, why is she all quiet now? They were doing experiments on humans, probably. Oh man, now she looks sad. Is there anything useful on that machine? Well, mm, don't know, you know. There are a bunch of cords hanging out. Jeez, this is a lot of cords. It looks like they all go over here to the mannequin's head. So the device and the mannequin are connected. What the hell were they doing in there? Oh man, back when this laboratory was active, that wasn't a mannequin in there, I bet. It was a real life human being on the table. I wonder what... No, I don't want to think about that. 
Hey Clover, how are the power cables over there? Huh? What do you mean? Does the plug have three prongs or two? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, let me go look. I guess she does ha have to kind of crouch down to get a look under there. Cable on the monitor has a... Uh, it's got two of those little me metal things. What does that mean? That's it! Okay, can you unplug that cable and bring it over here? Okay, but... But... Well, I can unplug it, but it's connected to the main computer. I can't take it over to you. Damn it, that's no good then. Well, how about just the plug? What? The plug? Well, maybe more like a connector. It's the sort of thing that makes the plug with three metal thingies in... Yes, yes. Still useless? No, no, no. Bring it, bring it, bring it. That's just what we were looking for. Okay, can you hold on for a little bit? And back down she goes. Alright, unplugged. I'll hand it to you over at the bars, okay? Hey, Clover. And ah, she's just wandering around the table. I don't think she even knows we're calling her. Oh, there's a door. Wait right there. I'll take a look. Oh no, it's locked. I can't get it to move. What the hell, man? Clover! Use, uh, soak it in ethanol, then use it to wash all the stuff from the permanent marker. Right, okay. Well, she's got the cloth and she seems to having little trouble with the bottle of ethanol. When she's ready, I should ask her to get ask her to get to work on that stuff on the table. But she's just wandering around the table. I think she's forgotten about it. What the f The mannequin looks so sad, I gotta admit, I'm starting to kind of feel sorry for her. Give me the plug! What is happening? Soak the cloth in ethanol and just spat everywhere, sorry. <laughs> Junpei, it's working. It's wiping the permanent ink off. Huh. There's some kind of weird drawing under all of the permanent ink. What's the deal with that drawing Clover found? Maybe I should ask her to take another look at the table? Can't tell what it is, but... I wonder what this is. A bunch of numbers and some kind of grid. I can't see it from here. Clover, you've got a pen and a, no and a notebook, right? Could you write those numbers down and hand them to me through the bars? Okay. Roger. Christ. Hey, Junpei. I wrote down all the numbers. Paper with numbers on acquired. The note Clover copied from the stand in the laboratory, it has four numbers written into nine separate cells. Man, it didn't look like it had that many lines on it from up there. One, four, three, and a two. Hey, here you go, the two-prong plug. Thanks. It's the two prong plug we can use to convert this one. Okay, put the yep, 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 yep. Convert it, convert it right now. I'm losing patience, desperately losing patience. All right, I've got the two prong plug. Pretty sure this will work. Under the desk I go. Let's just plug it into the monitor. All right, that ought to do it. All right, let's turn the power on. At last. Uh, I don't think anything is going to happen. Why not? Well, it's not connected to the main computer. You never know until you try. Pretty optimistic. And Junpei pushed the button on the front of the monitor. Oh, that worked. With a soft hum, it turned on. Streams of letters that made no sense to Junpei began to stroll, scroll across, across the screen. Blech. Scroll across. What? He had hoped it would turn on, but he hadn't expected this. Huh? It's running on its own? It certainly looks like it. Uh, isn't that kind of weird? What? Yeah. Well, it's not connected to the main computer, right? There's just this keyboard and monitor. The only cable connected to this thing is the power cable we just plugged in. So, why is it working? Maybe it's a wireless display. Clearly this was a reasonable explanation to Lotus. Uh, 
a wireless display. <laughs> yes, it connects to your computer wirelessly, hence the name. Have you been living in a cave, Junpei? You most certainly hadn't. But... Is that normal? Yes, at least where I worked. It's not really normal, is it? Oh. Oh, it's stopped. Pass with a colon. Looks like we need to enter a password. Again? Uh, there must be a hint around here somewhere. Could you go take a look? Yeah, I'm on it. What are you going to do? I'll see if I can do something about this on my own. On your own? Yep, on my own. Lotus? Lotus pulled over the nearest chair and dropped herself down onto it in front of the keyboard. For a second, she stared at the screen. She kneaded her hands, knuckles popping, and twisted her back left and right. All right. Jesus Christ. Let's kick some ass. Uh, June Pei's look like look straight ahead. Look straight ahead, June Pei. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> look at his face. <laughs> Don't look! Just don't look! Lota smiled to herself and rubbed her hands together in anticipation. I'm sure Junpei's doing the same thing. Then, <laughs> <sighs> before Junpei had time to blink, she was typing at an incredible speed, the click clack of the keys running together like machine gun fire. Uh. Wait, what? Junpei was for once at a loss for words, yeah, I'm didn't sure Didn't expect that, did you? Of course I didn't! You're typing so fast, I, I can't even see your fingers! Yeah, yes, placate. Lotus grins, pleased with herself. Well, at any rate, you're pretty amazing. <laughs> did you fall for me again? Seems that whoa, way. Whoa, 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 what do you mean, again? I'm not into you. Junpei, don't throw this away for us! I know, I know. Don't be so stubborn, shy boy. I am not being stubborn, I am not shy, and I am not a boy. I don't know, mate. Pedal pushes. Pedal pushes. I am a young, healthy, 21-year-old man. I'm not gonna fall for an old lady like you. Oh, why? Why? Dude, why? Suddenly, a guttural roar of a furious animal filled the room. Or so Junpei thought for just a moment. Lotus's hand suddenly stopped and her shoulders stiffened. Old lady? Did you just say old lady? No, he didn't. Uh, w w well, I, uh... <laughs> oh, crap, thought Junpei. I went too far. Yeah, he did. Captain Pedal Pushers. Oh, well, it was a nice life while it lasted. I've had enough of you. Go somewhere else. You're bothering me. Man. If she's flirting with you, Junpei, then just roll with it. What? Man. Go see if you can find a password hint or something. I'll try and open this from here. Uh. You're distracting me. Go. Now. The fool. Lotus waved her hand in the universal gesture of dismissal. Junpei was clearly not wanting. Fine. I, I guess I'll go. Time to cut my losses, Junpei thought, and left as quietly and inoffensively as he could. Junpei wandered around the room for a while, looking for anything that might help find the password for the computer. Unfortunately, nothing. <sighs> nothing. No clues whatsoever. Clover didn't find anything useful in the laboratory, either. Damn, looks like we've hit a dead end this time. But just as, just as he was about to tell Lotus that his search had returned nothing. All right, bullseye, Jimpe, I did it. Now this is a bit funny, right? Because if she's like hacked into this computer, surely that's not what Zero intended. Excited cheering erupted from near the monitor. <laughs> what? 
He hurried back to find Lotus, looking rather smug. Let me see. She gestured for him to <laughs> look at the screen, and he did. The strange text from before was gone, and in its place was something entirely different. Nine squares arranged into a three by three square. What is that? I don't have any idea. It just showed up after I cracked the password. You think it's a puzzle? It certainly looks like one. As she spoke, Lotus stood up. Huh? Aren't you gonna, I don't know, do more computer stuff? No, I can't do any more. It won't let me do any more programming. See? The keyboard. Nothing. So, there's nothing more I can do. Um... Well, I guess I'll leave this to you then, Junpei. What? Let me take a break, all right? I did my part. Yeah, uh, well... He wasn't sure what to say to that. He certainly had done her part. In fact, without Lotus, they would probably have run completely aground. I don't know. Would it really have been designed this way, this whole puzzle room? I shouldn't rely on other people so much, Junpei thought to himself. I guess you're right. Thanks, Lotus. No problem. And make sure you know when you should thank people. Now, I better take care of this myself. No more relying on anyone else. This whole game is literally about depending on other people's like, participation to survive, mate. Junpei crossed his arms and stared at the puzzle shown on the screen. Um. One, two, three, four. Key lock open. All right, I solved it. Did you hear a noise just now? Yeah, I did. It sounded like something unlocking. Where did it come from? Look, Junpei! The lights on the lockers are green! And we must have unlocked it with the computer puzzle. There's more than one key in here. This one's small, it looks like it goes into some sort of machine. And this one has the earth symbol on it. I think the earth symbol matches a keyhole in a door on, the de on a deck. Well, if that's the case, we probably don't need the earth key right now. Alright then, earth key. I'll just tuck you away deep in my pocket. Now, as for the other key. What is this? From the shape of it, I'd say it's not for a door. Probably some sort of device. Oh, what is it? I wonder, do you think maybe this is the activation key for that thing? The activation key? Yes, it has to be. I feel good about this. <laughs> I feel good about this! Ooh. It was just at that moment that he heard a voice behind him. It was Clover. Hey Junpei, do you have a minute? Of course! He put the puzzle aside for a moment and walked over to Clover. What's up? Um, well, never mind. Hey, hold on a minute. What does... Sorry, just forget about it. It's nothing. Okay, that's a clear sign that we're not going to get the information out of Clover this time around. Before he could say anything else, she spun around and ran back down the stairs. What the hell was that? After waiting a few minutes to see if she would return, Junpei sighed, shook his head and went back to searching. That's a shame then, so we're not going to get that information out of her. This key! The shape sure makes it seem like it goes in this machine! Alright, I'm turning it on! Okay, the monitor is on now, and it's full of letters. Did the did the did the translation writers take a day off when they did this room? Seriously, it's showing some kind of warning. Power restored to experimental device. Emergency system will activate in the event of abnormal subject behavior. Okay, typing on this keyboard is doing squat. Alright, power restored. This is the monitor. There are a whole lot of cables. Maybe I should give it a name. How about Science Boy? That's not a name! Junpei, this thing in here is on now. Yeah, that's because we activated the power over on this side. Would you like play with it a little? Okay. Yeah. I'll turn this dial here. Turn, turn, turn. 
If you turn, turn. Uh, I don't think it's working. Nothing happened. Maybe she missed something. I should ask her to look around the room again. Maybe if you increase the voltage. Roger, will do. Okay, gonna all the way to max. Max voltage? Hey! Wait, Clover. Oh, shit. What? Um, I think... Oh my god. It's mannequin's head! That sounds like a fire alarm. What the hell? Fire detected. Fire detected! The emergency system will be activated. Evacuate the room immediately. Damn. Gate's still shut. Control device for electronic lock. The green light is on. Junpei, look at the light. It's green. <laughs> the emergency system is activated and disabled the lock. Now we can save Clover. Junpei, come on, kid. Jump. She's safe. Oh, man, that smoke is some serious business. Time to close this door again, I think. Clover, are you okay? Are you hurt? <coughs> Damn, she's coughing so hard she can't even talk. <coughs> of course I'm not alright! What the hell took you so long, you big jerk? I was almost dead. Sorry, I was going as fast as I could. You two can do this later. Right now we need to get the hell out of here. The fire's not going to stay in that room forever. Alright, so this has definitely pushed Clover away from us. Well, I don't think we're gonna get a I don't think we're gonna get a chance to um have that heart to heart with her and give her the clover thing. Junpei, Clover and Lotus leapt out of the laboratory, slamming the door shut behind them. <sighs> Whew, thank God we got out of there. We got out of that one. Yeah, finally. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, yeah. All three collapsed against the wall, breathing heavily. <sighs> Pei's heart was pounding in his chest, and his whole body felt weak. He inhaled gulps of clean air, and with each one, he could feel his body begin to calm down. All right, let's go. Okay. They nodded to each other, and started off down the hallway. Before long, they found a few new doors, but all of them were locked. Damn, none of these open. They're all locked. How about that one? The final door sat in the corner of the hallway. Let's hope this is the door with the prize. Junpei grabbed the door handle and was about to pull it open when a voice cried out behind him. It was neither Clover nor Lotus, but he recognised it. There was no doubt the voice belonged to... Jumpy! Huh? He spun around. There, at the other end of the hall, June Pei saw human figures running toward him. Three of them. June? Santa! <laughs> Seven! They stopped short in front of June Pei and his companions, gasping for hey, air. what are you guys doing here? Oh! What? But we didn't... Before he could finish, Clover spoke. Hey, guys! Could you come take a look at this? He was standing near the end of a small hallway that branched off to the right. The rest of them ran over to her, curious as to what she found. Hey, on the wall. A map of the ship's interior? It says Sea Deck. So it's the map for this floor then? Door 7 and... Door 8. Yep, they both eventually end up at this hallway. Yeah, isn't that what I said? We aren't going to be split up permanently till we find door 9. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we won't be able to open door 9. And that's how the nonary game works. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. You pay look to the map again. Wait a sec. This leads to... As he looks more closely, his surprise and excitement gave way to weariness. Oh! You've got to be kidding me. One by one, the others saw what he'd seen. We may as well go. Yeah. 
As one, they all moved back toward the door Junpei had only a moment ago been ready to open. Oh, I almost forgot. We should keep this. He pulled the map of the ship's interior off the wall, put it in his pocket, and followed the others. The six of them stood in front of the door, arrayed in a semicircle. Santa stepped forward. With a poker ball in his hand, he took hold of the door and spoke, without looking back at the other five. Ready? I'm gonna open it. Good for you! They nodded as their silent they nodded their silent assent. With a deep breath, Santa threw open the door. So dramatic. Steelix, I choose you. They poured through the doorway and ran into the room. Even without looking around, each one of them knew where they were. I knew it. I can't believe how they drew Lotus in that chair, man. God, that was like the least subtle thing like, imaginable. They were just where the map had said they would be. We're back. In the hospital room. I see. I... Right. This should be the same now. The key? Ain't that what I just said? I'm talking about the Jupiter key. We found it in the operating room. Here. Seven tossed something small and metallic towards Junpei. Oh. <laughs> nice catch. Thanks. Jeez. He caught it and found that the object was a key. I see. So this is Jupiter. On it, someone had engraved a symbol very similar to a four. He looked over at Junior and nodded back. It had to be the Jupiter symbol. I'm going to let you hold on to that, all right? Yeah, on it. Jun Junpei took the new key into his so pocket. So how many unused keys do we have now? There's the Earth key we found in the laboratory. The Saturn key card we found in the kitchen. And the Jupiter key you just gave me. Junpei took the new keys the in his Jupiter pocket. The Jupiter key is supposed to be for the... Oops. Then, next to the stairs... Yep, they go through door three. Okay, this is all the same. Any reason we came back? No idea. You know, that's a good question. Junpei looked off into the distance thoughtfully. Lotus sighed and shook her head. I can't believe this. You guys followed me here, but you don't even know why? Uh. <laughs> Junpei, you've got the solar system keys, don't you? Yeah. He did. He pulled them out. The Saturn key card. And the Earth key. What about him? Junpei didn't see what they had to do with anything, though. Uh, didn't we have another key, a third one? Both he and Santa were completely lost. Fortunately, June took pity on them. Don't you remember the elevator? On Sea Deck, where we are now, there was a big elevator behind the stairs, remember? And next to the elevator... There right, this is all same as last time. Right, down we go, June. <laughs> After a little thought, Junpei decided that she had been nervous about being locked in such a small space alone with a boy. Well, um, we will be all alone in here. In a way, he, it was kind of cute. Very demure, you could say, he thought. Still, even though it wasn't exactly roomy in the elevator, they weren't going to be pressed up against one another. At least they didn't have to be. Still, it was making her nervous. Junpei couldn't help but think how innocent she was. <laughs> Jumpy? Huh? Oh, uh, nothing. It's not important. Come on, let's go. Again, he stepped toward the elevator. 
Again, he felt himself restrained. I said, wait a minute. Why? Aren't you afraid, Jumpy? Afraid of what? Well, I've never, you know. It's your <laughs> first time? <laughs> She'd never been in an elevator with a man built alone before. Even so, she still seemed awfully alarmed. I might get wet. Uh, oh, what? Down there. <laughs> I get soaking wet. Well, I, I mean, of course you would. That's the way it works. <laughs> I mean, I've never heard of anyone getting soaking wet uh, somewhere else. <laughs> that's... That's true. Oh, this is great. <sighs> you don't mind? <laughs> mind what? Getting wet. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'd probably, um, you know, <laughs> like it. Gosh, Jumpy, you're so brave. Really? Uh, I mean, I kind of think any guy would do the same thing, you know? What happens, happens, right? I mean, if you get the chance, you've just got to go for it. I mean, that's what a man is supposed to do. I... You're so cool, Jumpy. I really admire you. Uh, that doesn't really seem like the sort of thing you ought to admire someone for. I... I'm really scared. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you've never done it before. Yes. <laughs> so, I don't think I'll be able to last very long. <laughs> and then it'll be... over. Uh, over? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll go to heaven. <laughs> heaven? It feels kind of like you're floating in space, and your mind gets all fuzzy, like when you pass out. At least that's what I've heard from people who have experienced it. Ah, uh, yes, I've I've heard that too. Mm. Although I, I don't think the same thing happens to guys. Wh what? Huh? <laughs> but it would happen to men too, wouldn't it? It would happen to anyone. Once it gets into your body, the same thing happens to everyone. Well, I I mean, um, usually it it, it doesn't go inside the man. Uh, I mean, generally. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, it does. Well, eventually it will. It's not like you really have a choice. Your body will force you to swallow some of it. Eventually. What are you trying to do to me? Nothing. I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just saying that that's what happens. It's a psychological reaction to what you're experiencing. Oh, is that so? Huh. It's only... Oh, sorry, I did ask it. Is that... Oh, no. And it's only natural? Is that what's natural for living beings? Perhaps he'd been mistaken all these years. See? You'd have better answers here, Junpei, if you decided to flirt with <laughs> Lotus a bit more. He'd misunderstood life so... Had he misunderstood life so gravely? The thought terrified him. Jun seemed to be entirely oblivious to Junpei's mounting confusion and terror. I know most men probably have larger lungs, but... Even then, I don't think you could hold your breath for 20 or, or even 10 minutes. Eventually, you'd have to breathe, and then the water would get into your lungs. Once that happens, your body won't be able to get oxygen anymore, and you'll start to feel that floaty feeling as you pass out. Uh... Huh. Oh... Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Jun Junpei's got s <laughs> Junpei's laugh is very much I'm about to turn into the villain Finally Junpei understood He understood what Jun was trying to say And why she was so scared <laughs> Yeah, you're right You wouldn't last very long See? She was afraid that the only elevator button pointed down That meant of course that the elevator Couldn't go any higher than the floor they were on <laughs> As he thought about it, Junpei realized he hadn't seen elevators on the A or B decks near the central staircase. All of which meant that the elevator could only convey them to the lower decks. <sighs> Come. Right, back on track to where we were last time. So we're gonna ID the rooms, check on Snake's fake body, and then we'll do the business with the papers. And choose the next room.
Well, we'd probably get really wet up there. Huh? At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can. Once we're done. Yeah, so this is door six. Grab the map for E deck. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and we get the uh, notion of, don't we have an input to say here? Not sure. And yeah, then he says about the, ca the captain. a move and decide who where we're going next perhaps Okay, the last one is mine. I want to go through. Alright, so when I did this last time, I went through door one. Um, just let me check. I went with seven lotus. So we've been through, I've been through door two. So door six is the one we want to go for because it's got the golden gun. So um, I'm going to leave the video there guys uh, we are going to go through door six but I'll, I'll do that in the next video um is there another combination that lets us go through door two that involves going through with clover and uh, nine yeah But would the other three be able to go through? Probably not. No. So I think if we went through door two again, it would likely be very similar to what we experienced on the door three route. But there will be differences. But I'm gonna go through door six because that's the that's the I think that's the last thing we we need to see in terms of puzzles. So I think we'll be able to auto skip through puzzles maybe um, after this. So yeah, interesting. So the the main difference between doors seven and eight is we don't get the key things with Clover. So my guess is the the golden path is. Maybe door five, door seven, and then maybe door six, because then we can prevent Santa from getting the gun. Maybe it could be door two, though, because we'd have the... If we had the information from door seven that we got from Clover, 
and we got to speak to Seven in door two. That would. Oh, but that's interesting though. If 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 we do go through with um, Seven and Lotus, right, to door two, where does that leave the others? That's right, isn't it? Ace, Santa, Clover, and June. So would they be able to go through the other doors in any way? I'm not so sure. Anyway, we'll find this out. We're gonna we're gonna find out how this unravels in the next video. So yeah, um, a lot of a lot of funny things there. Jinpei putting his foot in it multiple times. The ridiculous drawing of Lotus in front of the computer. <laughs> some lonely lonely artists i think anyway we'll pick it up for it next time hope you enjoyed it leave me a thumbs up if you did and just remember everybody never trust an on crate i'll see you next time